lights up on an interrogation room. It's an empty room aside from a table with a chair on one side and two chairs on the other. Zero enters with Seven, who is handcuffed and being pushed in by Zero. All right, all right, let go of me. Zero shoves Seven down in the chair, unhandcuffs him, then walks over to the other side of the table and sits in the chair. Seven, 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 seven. Look, man, I already told you, I didn't do anything. I know, I know. I just thought it was best for us to talk in private for a little while. It's not a problem, is it? I told you, there's nothing I can tell you. I didn't do it. Listen, Seven, if you just comply with what I ask you and tell me the truth, it'll make this whole thing a lot easier. Will I get to leave? After we're done, yes. Fine, what do you want to know? Where were you on the night of March 14th, 2015? I I was uh, at my my friend Eleven's house. Who else was there? I I think it was me, Eleven, Twelve, and Calvin. Where does Eleven live? In the suburbs, just outside Number City. Are you aware of what happened on that same night? I think I heard about it on Number News Network. Yes. What did you hear? Some number went missing or something. Which number? I don't, I don't know. I think it I think it might have been nine or something. What was your relationship to nine? I, I didn't even know her. Not even after you sent these letters? Zero whips out a plastic bag filled with three foam letters of the alphabet. She pulls out the letters E, A, and T in that order facing the audience. Can you explain to me what these letters were doing on nine's kitchen table with the return address as your house? Look, look, it's not that. Can you explain why on the envelope it says two nine from seven? Well, I, I don't think it's... Oh, can you tell me why you chose the letters E, A, and T, which interestingly enough spell out the word eat? Uh, no, 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 uh, officer, you got it all wrong. The, the letters don't spell out eat, they spell out T. Seven grabs the letter T at the end of eat holds it in his hands and looks at it for a second, then places it in front of the E, spelling out the word T to the audience. You see, I, I was just inviting my friend Nine out to some, some T. Didn't you just say you didn't have any relation to Nine? Oh, look, we, we, uh, we, we met on Numble, the, the, the dating app. I, I had a date with her coming up, and I thought it would be a romantic gesture to send her a letter inviting her to T. So you were just inviting her to tea? I, I, exactly, officer. We met on Numble, and I asked her to some tea, and then she, uh, well, you know what happened. Mm, oh, boy, do I know what happened. Now, Seven, what is typically needed to drink tea? I don't know. A, a kettle, a teapot, a teaspoon, maybe? And what about a ladle? Zero pulls out a plastic bag containing a comically large ladle spattered in blood from under the table. At the scene of the crime, we found this ladle filled with blood. And interestingly enough, it looked just like a certain number. Zero flips the ladle upside down, showing its similarity to the number seven. <laughs> that, that's nonsense, all ladles look like that. Yeah, well it also says, Property of seven on the bottom. Zero reveals a tag that says property of seven on the bottom of the ladle. It's not what it looks like. Oh yeah, because we found it right next to this audio tape. Zero pulls out another plastic bag with a cassette tape in it. Where are all these bags coming from? Let's take a listen, shall we? Zero pulls out a plastic bag with a cassette player in it. She takes it out of the bag and puts the cassette tape in it. Mmm, I can't wait to eat nine with this comically large ladle. I'm going to eat her up real good, real delicious stuff right in my tummy. Mm -mm. I just hope the police don't find this ladle or the cassette tapes I'm using to document this for my podcast. That, that, that's not even what I sound like. Who is that? Oh, yeah. Because someone needed to recognize that voice from the night of the crime. Bring her in, boys. Six stumbles on stage through the door. Six appears to be terrified at the sight of Seven. 
Oh no! No, 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 no! Six tries to leave, but the door has locked behind her. Six, please have a seat. Six sits in an empty chair next to Zero, eyeing Seven. Six, can you please describe your relationship to Nine? Oh gosh, well, Nine was my roommate. We were best buds. We did everything together. She and I had a special bond. Sometimes we would like- enough of that. And where were you on the night of March 14th, 2015? Oh boy. Well, I, I was in my room watching TV and I knew that Nine had met this guy on Numble, but she, she didn't say much about him. She showed me his profile picture once, but that was it. Then on that night, March 14th, I heard some sort of ruckus coming from outside of my room. I thought maybe Nine was just doing the dishes or moving the furniture or something, but then it stopped. And then I heard, I heard slurping. That was when I started getting suspicious. So I peeked through the crack in my doorway and I saw, I saw. What did you see? <laughs> <laughs> Six, please try to compose yourself. I know this is hard for you, but you have to tell me what you saw. I saw Seven crouched over Nine's body, eating her insides with a ladle. <laughs> Seven, it will make things a lot easier if you just confess. Is Six's statement accurate as to how the events transpired? Yes, officer. Huh. So you went the whole nine yards, didn't you? Good one, officer. You must have really been on cloud nine, weren't you? You're on a roll, officer. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is that tonight you intentionally lied to a police officer during an interrogation about your involvement in a homicide case. Look, oh, officer, it's not that. I don't want to hear another word from you. Your days are numbered seven. You better get ready for the last of them. Zero pulls out a pair of handcuffs and crosses to seven. Oh, yeah? Well, your days are numbered too. And that number is zero. Seven grabs the letter T from the table, holds it like a gun, and shoots zero as a gunshot sound effect plays. Zero falls to the ground. I feel alive, baby. Yummy tummy tum tum time. Seven grabs the blood-spattered ladle from the table and approaches Zero. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, Six, you're still here. What are you, what are you so afraid of? Come on, you can talk to me. I'm going to be sick. Six <gasps> runs to the corner of the room and begins to gag. A little nostalgic, aren't you, Six? Huh? Did you miss me? Did you, do you regret not saying a quick little hi to me all those years ago when I came for nine? Do you regret not getting in on the action? Well, here's your shot. Seven holds out the ladle to Six and gestures for her to come to him. Drink, my child. Drink the blood of the numbers who have fallen from the number line. They give us life. They invigorate us. Join me. Join me. Six begins You're to turn insane. around, shaking. You're insane. You're bananas. Oh, don't be so afraid, Six. Why are you afraid of me? Why are you so afraid of good old seven? Come on, why is six afraid of seven? Because, because. I'll go on, say it. Don't tease me like that. Because you're a crazy cannibal. Six charges at seven, who quickly shoots her with the T gun. Another gunshot sound effect plays, and six falls to the ground as well. Wrong answer. Seven then places the letter T back with the other letters to create the word eat. He then stands back, examines it, and moves the E to the end of the word to make the word eight. Seven then takes the handcuffs from the dead zero and holds them up to the audience so they make the shape of the number eight. Well, zero, you were right. I ate nine. And now it's your turn. Oh, zero calories. Seven gets down on his knees next to zero as the stage goes dark. <laughs> 